Hello, my name is Jeffrey L. Wilson, lead analyst at PCMag.com, and I welcome you to the first episode of PCMag and Mashable's uh, Summer of Gaming video series. Uh, this episode is going to be more of a serious tone. We're going to discuss uh, the George Floyd murder by the hands of police and how it's impacted the gaming community. Um, I have two, two guests here, Jordan and, jo and Jess. Yes. How are you guys doing? Hello. Hi. Good. Yeah. Within All reason. Right. <laughs> yeah. Within reason. Within reason. <laughs> um, it's been a lot of things happening in the world right now. We went from COVID to George Floyd and the protests. And a lot of gaming companies have, have spoken out in regards to supporting uh, Black Lives Matter and police reform. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Jordan. What do you think of these statements uh, are they sincere? Are they trying to just stay in the news cycle? What do you think? Um, well, first, I'll say it's it's almost kind of lucky for them that lucky that they already had to rearrange their plans so much because of no more E three and everything right. being remote. So they're already a lot more flexible to be like, well, all right, we can postpone this. Like if mm -hmm. like if all, if this was all happening during E three, do you think Sony would have pushed back their PS five reveal? Like no, no. Um, mm. So that's something I've been thinking about. Mm -hmm. But in terms of um, them putting out statements, like at least they're doing it. Um, the reaction, maybe I'm just, I'm just, cause I just expect nothing. Like the reaction has been more, um, has been louder than I guess I would have expected, but that's mm -hmm. really like the bare minimum. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of, I kind of feel the same way. I was kind of shocked that so many companies actually took a hard stance, which is something that you don't usually get from, uh, from these big companies. Uh, but Jess, your yes. thoughts? Yeah, totally. I think um, just, yeah, Jordan, what you said about like, I didn't, like, we didn't even expect the bare minimum, like, speaks volumes. Um, you know, Valve hasn't even said anything, and that's like one of the biggest, I mean, the biggest gaming company possibly. Um, and that is to me shocking. But I think like, we all know enough of how games react. Like, I think the minute, you know, it was controversial or bold for Wolfenstein 2 to say killing Nazis is okay. Mm. Um, I mean, I think, like, that set the bar for, like, well, what can games say at all about white supremacy if that's bold? <laughs> if, right. like... Yeah, I'm surprised <laughs> that they're even saying, like, the term right. Black Lives Matter. Yeah, like, at, at all. Yeah. yeah. Well, totally. well, some companies are. Some some companies right, are taking right. a, more, a, more, a more nuanced approach <laughs> and saying that we, we support justice and for all people you know yeah, yeah. um but in, in terms of very specific instances like for example uh, i believe it was um the call of duty crew they mm -hmm. mentioned that they want to you know improve uh online discourse between the players you know getting someone to rid of some of the racist elements and uh, my thought was it took this for you to, yeah. to right. address yeah. that like why did it take so long yeah exactly you know? I mean, do you, do you think that, you know, this is, this is kind of like the hot thing in the moment, but do you think these companies will, you know, stand firm and actually execute long term? No. Uh, it'll, <laughs> it'll be a while before we, we would even see that, like, in terms mm -hmm. of how, just how long it takes to make games, right? Like, mm -hmm. there, could be a, there could be a way of, like, you know, two years from now where all of a sudden, like, oh, like, oh, now we've made the full-fledged Miles Morales game as opposed to this confusing standalone thing. Right. Um, but it's, I don't know. The, the Miles Morales example is, I think, like, particularly pertinent because, um, like, there, I forget who it was. Ugh, I'm going to, I hate that I forgot. But um, someone wrote an article from the first um, Spider-Man game, which was, like, they turned Spider-Man into a cop and it sucks. And it's true. Like, he's literally a cop. He, like, un, just, like, beats up mostly majority like black and brown people and then leaves them for the cops like asks no questions as to what they did or why the cops want them just like just is a cop and then um there's so much copaganda as they say in mm. games it's so embedded in most mainstream games like literally when your verb for most games is kill like what can you say about police brutality um mm. and like the miles morales example is to me like will be a moment where we have to see like how do they handle the fact that they turn the spider-man the white spider-man into a cop what is how is that going to translate into like 
changing the mechanics for when like Miles Morales is like helming it and is Spider Man. Um, are they going to? Now he's going to be that? invisible when he's doing this kind of stuff. <laughs> so just yeah, it erasing blue. him altogether. Yeah. <laughs> Shamik Moore reprising his role. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's a good point. And in regards to that, you know, they're putting out the Spider-Man uh, game this fall, I believe. Yeah, PS5 launch, sounds like. Yeah. They're probably neck deep into the mechanics of that game already. And like you said, Jess, torching on a bigger cultural, cultural issue, the super cop has become so embedded in culture, like, like yeah. die hard. Um, yeah. And if you wanted to go a step further, like how many like military one-man armies, like with commando and things like that. Mm-hmm. So... Do you think that, you know, in pop culture and in gaming, we'll see a change in that going forward? Well, I mean, like, they're taking cops off air. I mean, that's huge. I mean, you know, uh, cops the show, not just, like, all cops. <laughs> um, right. but, uh, but they've taken – I know, I wish. Um, but uh, but the, I, it does seem to me that, like, TV – and it might be because of just how cycles work in games, like you said, like, Granted, like, you know, game cycles take so much longer to make than TV. Um, and, like, pulling something off the air, you know, just has different – is different than, like, let's rewrite all of the mechanics of video games. Um, and so I think it is a more complicated and question and, and, and for them to address. But um, – and I don't know if I trust them to. Like, I don't know. And mm-hmm. But there are, I think, interesting things that games could do if you think about it as a, a system, a, as a medium that is based in expressing things through systems, wouldn't it be the ideal thing to express and deal with systemic injustice, like you know, race and police brutality? Like, wouldn't mm. well, wouldn't you think something that like is literally a, the art of systems um, be able to? And I have, I do, I do know like um, Nikki Case is an indie developer who does like explainable explorables. Mm-hmm. Um, and he has this whole like the parables of polygons. I hope everyone Googles that. It has a really, he uses systems to kind of explain how injustice kind of hmm. happens like systemically. Um, and, and it's really interesting. And I think it, that could be amazing if we saw more of that kind of innovation in mainstream games. But I just don't trust them to do that. Yeah, they, uh, they put out the Mafia trilogy again. And Mafia uh-huh. 3, well, has some issues. I think actually is like for a mainstream game, right. like systemizes racism in a ways that like aren't huh. totally em- embarrassing. Um, right. Right. Does it, has, it has a... Keys, but. It has the actual like racism system, right? Yeah, uh, like, point, right? Yeah, um, when you're in like wider parts of town, like the police will just hassle you more. Um, oh, that's uh, crazy! I had no idea. Yeah. yeah, the game's all right. Yeah, I'll check uh, that out. The game, the article you were talking about is they turn Spider-Man into a damn cop, and it sucks. Yes. <laughs> um, from Tom Lay on Deadspin, famous website. Yes, yes. All right, Pete. So let me ask you: What would you like to see happen? Uh, many companies are talking about putting up uh, money for for funds mm-hmm. towards like black developers to give them more spotlight. Yeah. Um, others are, are 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 simply making statements. What would you like to see happen besides just 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 making games in terms of opportunity and the like? Mm-hmm. Um, I was trying to think of some things, but then I saw uh, Sean. Uh, creator of Treasury and Beat Down City, um, posted a tweet that has his ideas that I'm just going to crib from because they're really sure, good. Sure, sure. Um, well, uh, yeah, you, yeah. Um, it's, you know, make sure, like, like, actually, like, funding black creators, like, not just, mm-hmm. um, just yes. not just leaving representation, like, for, like, the fictional characters. Um, mm-hmm. He says, have mentorship programs, but don't be weird about it. <laughs> uh, stop, yeah, stop posting jobs looking for very specific skill sets that are just going to, like, really um, just leave a lot of uh, underrepresented groups just unable to, to qualify. Um, and these are issues that are bigger than the games industry. Um, mm-hmm. But those are like issues that, the games industry. That, plague, that plague a lot of industries. Yeah. Um, and, and personally, one of the issues I think is a factor is that a lot of people are also blind to their biases. Um, and they hire a lot of people who are their friends or people mm-hmm. they went to school with. And if all those people are exactly like you, yeah. There's no door open for anyone else. Totally. And of course, there's yeah. this good old fashioned racism. Yes. <laughs> Always raise its head. Can't, can't, can't forget about that one. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, yeah. in ways, these old fashioned racism, you can see it and be like, all right, I know what that mm-hmm. is. Whereas right. the more insidious stuff, like you don't even know. And sometimes the people don't even like consciously know. Right. Yeah. Right. It's I had to, I had a, a, a previous, uh, in my previous, uh, how do I put this gently? A previous employer, I had to check someone because I was uh, in a hoodie 
walking around because the air conditioning was up too high. And they said to me, why are you looking so menacing? Oh my so we God. had to have a, a, nice, uh, <laughs> a, nice, a nice chat about that. Uh, and see, that should not be your job. That's where, like, obviously, I'm white. I don't know, like reveal. Um, <laughs> that's our job, you know, like that, that should not be your, if like anybody was like hearing that, this is our problem to deal with. And uh, like, that is to me what I don't trust a lot of video game companies to do is like, I mean, we've seen it with reporting on, on like women's issues, um, you know, in, in Riot Games. And I don't want to at all divorce those two things because, you know, women of color are severe, like if we think, you know, black people in general are underrepresented. Women are underrepresented. Women of color are severely, and specifically black women are very, very underrepresented. And like, when you see that the kind of cultures built around them, it's just like, you know, the majority, um, whoever is in the majority, whether it's men or, you know, white people or an intersection of both, um, there's very little to call it, like, no one has an incentive to call each other out and there shouldn't be an incentive, right? But there's a huge risk involved in calling each other's behaviors out. Um, and like, you're suddenly like the woke one that like, you know, everyone's scared of. <laughs> and, and like, that's what makes me really nervous. And I, I do think black creators is like a key here because, um, you know, games are also really good at, you know, giving people experiences living inside other identities and like, man, wouldn't that be great if we had more mm. black creators making like lived experiences? Um, and for that, we need them on the, de on the designer and developer side. Like it's not mm -hmm. just a matter of like visual representation, which is fantastic. That's half the battle, not even half, maybe like a, a quarter. Um, but you need to have like different experiences that speak to more people and, and feel safe for people. Like I, like I don't feel safe going online. I'm sure a lot of black people don't feel safe either. I mean, like it's the number one mm issue with going like in online games you know like racism is disgusting and yeah, I, I remember very clearly my very first my not even my very first racist experience my very first online experience but it was racist so right. <laughs> it, went, it went, it went yeah. hand in hand it went hand in hand um i think that um in regards to you know how we go from the future i immediately what i think is going to happen like we see these companies trying to um funds that create funds for to, to encourage more uh black developers or to bring you know more spotlight to them but i also think there's going to be a lot of uh, people brought in to be consultants mm. on a lot of games which i don't which is a good baby step but yeah. you need someone who's actually going to be a creator who has a point of view and a voice who can tell you no that's really messed mm -hmm. up that's racist that's stereotypical and and besides that just give them the freedom to be a creator like yeah. I, yeah, what's, what's going to happen when that consultant just goes away? Like, mm -hmm. right, yeah. and right. the culture stays the same. Yeah. So I, th I think that you know, big picture is is a lot to do, um, and we should take this last this last few moments to let, let's just shout out someone or a company or a developer mm -hmm. or a publisher who who's, who's making like great black video games or making great criticism um, mm -hmm. in the written word. Mm -hmm. Um. Jordan, anyone you have in mind that you can shout out that you want to highlight? I want to shout out actually the Game Devs of Color Expo that happens uh, in Harlem here in New York. Um, this year it was an online event, but in the past it's been uh, at the Schomburg Center in Harlem. Mm -hmm. That's a really cool show. I go every year where you see all these all these indie devs of color just show off their stuff, and they've had like Microsoft and Nintendo and uh, these other big publishers kind of kind of help them out. So mm -hmm. that's a great event. That people Microsoft come. has been been pretty pretty good about yeah. um, funding a lot of uh, yeah. uh, uh, those of color black people. Uh, yeah. Jess, anyone you want to mention? Totally. <laughs> um, I've been uh, Black Girl Gamers Twitch stream. Um, I love them. They're awesome, and I think uh, you know it just takes like normalizing this as a thing that you know um, black women specifically can love. For me, as a white woman, it took like seeing other girls playing for me like oh it's okay to play so i think that's super important um but you know i love uh leah alexander's work uh just she's generally great to follow on twitter for like her commentary um for her writing and she also is a game dev um and uh meg jayanth i love her too she wrote on 80 days she is an insanely talented narrative designer um 80 days is a really interesting um game if you haven't played it 
it's like anti-colonialism, even though it's like grounded in this story based in colonialism. It's really cool. Um, and then, oh, I had, oh, oh, Gita Jackson has been doing incredible work, not just in mm. games, um, but she is a, was primarily um, a, a games writer, but she has been doing great work uh, at Vice, elsewhere. Uh, just follow her and her work, and I think she's- Strong, is. strong writer, strong Twitter. Yes. Yes, just strong, strong Twitter presence. Oh, yes. also the entire fighting game community. Oh my gosh! Yes, yes. We Sonic can't forget, Fox. Yes. <laughs> we can't forget my the hero. FGC, the the the, the 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 people of color, the backbone yes. of the FGC. Yes. And um, I'll wrap this up by shouting out new challenger Sean Alexander Allen, who created Treachery and Beatdown City, what we reviewed on PCMag.com. Excellent. Uh, beat him up. Uh, uh, RTS strategy game. Uh, check it out. It's on Steam and various platforms. Mm -hmm. And awesome. that's big picture. We have, we have a ways to go and a lot to do. And it's up to all of us, be it people in the media, be it, be it the fans, stay on top of this because it's very easy to forget about things when they fall out of the news cycle. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Um, yes. Here's to the future. Black Lives Matter. And mm -hmm. let's, go to the, let's, go, let's keep going forward. <laughs> Keep going in the streets. <laughs> Keep going. I'm Jeffrey Wilson, Jeff Joe, Jordan Minor. We're out.